Hey church, I hope you're doing well. I'm gonna start off today just a little bit different than normal and in that I want to share with you some poetry. Now this one comes in form of a song but I'm not gonna exactly sing it for you today. But, but I imagine you've heard this poem, this lyricist, this songwriter. I, I imagine that you might even be familiar with the lyrics to this song. Who am I talking about? Well, he was born on May 24th 1941 with the name Robert Allen Zimmerman. You know exactly who I mean. Well, you, you might if you've put together some hints from the sermon title and know a bit of random trivia about different people. But Robert Allen Zimmerman obviously goes more often by a nickname. Uh, he actually adopted a new last name, legally changed his last name, and then goes for a nickname. It, it's not really, you know, Bobby Z, it's not so much Zim Zimmerman or Zimmy Zimmeister, and it's not even Roberto or anything like that. Who is this gentleman, Robert Allen Zimmerman? Well, you and I, we probably have heard of him and know him by the name of Bob Dylan. Yep, Bob Dylan. He is a prolific songwriter, a poet, he's an artist, he's all kind of things. And I wanted to share with you one of his songs, the lyrics to one of his songs today as we begin our conversation. Here you go. Come gather round people wherever you roam and admit that the waters around you have grown and accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone. If your time to you is worth saving, you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone for the times. They are a changing. Come writers and critics who prophesize with your pen and keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again. And don't speak too soon for the wheels still in spin. And there's no telling who that it's naming. For the loser now will be later to win. For the times, they are a changing. Come senators, congressmen, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway, don't block up the hall. For he that gets hurt will be he who has stalled. The battle outside is raging. We'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls for the times they are a changing. Come mothers and fathers throughout the land. Don't criticize what you can't understand. Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command. Your old road is rapidly raging, aging. Please get out of the new one if you can lend your hand for the times. They are a change in the line it is drawn, the curse it is cast. The slow one now will later be fast, and this is the present now will later be past. The order is rapidly fading, and the first one now will later be last. For the times, they are a change in. Mr. Zim Zimmy Zimmerman there wrote that song, that tune, those lyrics in 19. 64. And if you were around then, and from what I understand of history, in 1964, that song was rather accurate. The times, they are changing. Things are not going to remain the same. Things are changing in a rapid pace. But I'd also argue that this song has stuck around a bit, and folks like me have heard it, because if you first heard it in the 1980s, you would go, hey, the times, they are a-changing. Or if you heard it as a kid in the 90s going to high school and, and college, the times, they are a-changing and entering into the new century. The chimes, they are a-changing. In fact, I think Mr. Dillon here has struck something uh, true. He's hit the nail on the head when it comes to this song. The times are a-changing, and that's always been the case. The times have always been changing. Change is part of our existence here on this planet. If, if you think about this giant rock we call Earth and its uh, rotation as it orbits around the sun and the way that, that night changed to morning and changes to afternoon, changes to evening, and that happens again, the way it's, that the seasons come in and change, winter, spring, summer, and fall, to borrow you know, in somebody else's song. But, but the times are always changing. 
New life is happening. Death occurs. Relationships start. Relationships fail. Times change over and over and over and over again. Change is part of our everyday existence. Bob gets it right here, saying that the times are a change it, that, that he tells people to, to be aware of this and to get on board with the times. But with that notion, especially when he speaks about verse 4, and he, he says, you know, the, the mothers and fathers had better get out of the way for the new road's coming in, and if you're not on that new path, then you, you need to step off. You either help the new road in or step aside. He promotes kind of this idea that all of the change, all of the flux, fluctuation, all of the new things are equivalent to progress, and that all change is good. I'm not so quick to jump on that bandwagon. In fact, I, I probably disagree with him in that way. Some, th some change is good, especially if it's change that results as our, our relationship with, with God grows and, and it's change that is transformation and brings about new life, uh, life and is progressive in terms of the, our depth and our understanding of God and, and people and how we grow in love, that type of change is good and we definitely should adopt that and and welcome it into our, our midst but there's also change that is just sort of ambivalent that's neither good nor bad it's just different and then there's change that can be worse if someone changes from bright and jolly and vibrant in their faith following after Jesus to gloomy and depressed and filled with darkness and following after their own desires and their own selfishness, that change maybe wasn't so good. In fact, it wasn't good. There's some change that is good. There's some change that is just change, neither good nor bad. And then there's some change that I would argue makes things worse. So I can't quite say Bob got the whole thing right. Uh, because to me, it kind of promotes this idea that newer is better, and that's not always the case. For instance, with using his road analogy, get, get off the new one. Um, I was driving the other day, and, and we were driving on a road that was an older road in Pittsburgh and in need of repair. And the process that they took wasn't just to obliterate the old one, and completely do away with it and carve a new road out where no road existed before. No, they, they removed the surface in sections. Apparently the old patch a pothole method had grown old and it was no longer able to, to be fixed in that way. And so they'd take off this couple inch layer of the road, but they did it in sections. So you'd be driving along and everything was fine. And then everything was rough everything's fine, everything's rough, and, and on and on it went. They, they kept the main structure of the old road and changed some things on top that needed fixing. The whole old way didn't need destroyed, it just needed some improvement, some fixing. And sometimes I think in our life when we are regarding change, it's not that just all of the old ways need removed, but sometimes they need a bit refreshed. Potholes need attended to, the top may need resurfaced, some new ideas and some learning and growth that, that we've come to because of the ways the old, old ways have failed can be adopted and added onto the new road. Anyway, that's my comment about the song. And this is a long lead in to get us to where I want us to be today. And that is to recognize that the times, they are a changing. And sometimes when the times are a changing, they, they do so in obvious and immediate kind of ways. Ways that we know that the, the change is coming. We, we know that it's going to be obvious. We know that it's going to be drastic. We know that it's going to have an impact and an effect on our lives and possibly on the lives of others. There are changes like that, major big changes that happen in and amongst, you know, the, the smaller rhythm of life type changes. 
right now in this season, bigger changes are before us. Um, you, you may know, you've likely heard, the United Methodist Church as a denomination is going through a process of change. Many churches have withdrawn from the denomination, have chosen to disaffiliate, no longer are part of the United Methodist Church, and its um, organization and its structure choosing a different path. And as the churches have made those decisions, that changes the shape of the United Methodist Church, at least here in the United States. The, the shape of, that, of the church as a denomination will change. Now for me personally, and perhaps for you, as you are engaging in these videos, well, that means a change in my own life because I serve two current United Methodist Church, Middletown United Methodist Church and Gethsemane United Methodist Church. And through their discernment process and through prayer and through consideration, those churches have decided to go different paths. Gethsemane will remain United Methodist Middletown is choosing to disaffiliate and remove itself from the United Methodist denomination. That means that the relationship that they've had together for a number of years will no longer be the same. They won't share the same pastor. They won't be on the same charge. They won't run their meetings together any longer. And so that means there is a change coming in the relationship that those two churches have had. One will continue in the UMC, one will no longer do so. That impacts me personally in that I will no longer be able to serve those two churches together. My employment will change and that change will happen relatively soon by July. That, that change is coming. The times, they are a changing. Life will look different. It, it's definitely going to happen. This is a planned and known change that will, will bring about different circumstances. I don't know what will happen in terms of, you know, doing video messages and how those are done and, and put forward. I don't know what will happen in terms of exactly where we will be as a family and, and what our path will look like and what churches or church we serve and, and how that looks. There's a lot of unknowns ahead. The times, they are changing. And when we face these times of change in our, maybe in our uh, churches, in the, the organization of them, when we face these times of change in our own personal lives and how they look, when we face times of change because things have uh, no, no longer continue to exist that once existed or, or whatever change it might be, whether it's a result of new life or perhaps even death. When the times they are changing, what do we do? Where do we turn? And how do we respond? As I think that Mr. Dillon has hit upon something that that is true uh, across any age, that has been true throughout the ages, it's helpful for us to, to look in the Bible and see how God addresses his people as times are changing in their lives. And today we're actually going to go through a number of scriptures where God says everything might change. Everything may change, but God remains. And that message is repeated over and over, that God remains true, that God remains steadfast, that God remains sure, that God remains even as everything changes. And that's a helpful and a hopeful word, I think, for us. Because I think even though we live in this world of constant change and where things shift and move and, and where there is, you know, some predictability to it. It's not like it's completely random kind of changes, but when when things change all of the time, there's something within us that wants something to be steady, something to be true, something to be faithful, something that we can latch on to that won't change, that won't falter, that won't fail. And if we think that's our job and that falls apart, where is our foundation? If we think that's our family even and that falls apart, where is our foundation? 
if we think that's our neighborhood, our country, our community, whatever we grab onto, our finances, and they fall apart, what is our foundation? As the times they are changing, God says over and over, and we're going to visit a number of these passages, passages today where, where God says, even if everything else fails, falters, I remain. First passage of scripture comes from Psalm uh, 27, verse 10. And hear, hear these words. The psalmist says, Though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will receive me, or the, the Lord will hold me close. The psalmist said, Even if the people that gave me life have brought me into this world, even if those who are supposed to, to prepare me and look after me and, and, and get me ready for these changing times, even if those people who are most likely to never fail me, even if they forsake me, the Lord will hold me close. The Lord will receive me. If, if all the world changes and falls apart, God will still welcome me. And that's the perspective in Psalm 27, 10. And then we hear these words in Hebrews 13, chapter, or chapter 13, verse 8. The writer of Hebrews says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The writer of Hebrews wants us to know that, that no matter what changes may happen, no matter what the landscape of our life might look like, Jesus Christ remains. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Jesus Christ is the same today. Jesus Christ is the same tomorrow and forevermore. He will never change. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, we hear this. This is a, a thing that God tells his people. I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. I don't change, so you won't be destroyed. God makes this promise to the people of Israel, the descendants of Jacob. I, the Lord, do not change. In Numbers 22, verse 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Not only does God's character and nature change, but, but God remains true to his word. That doesn't change even. If he speaks, he acts. If he promises, he will fulfill. Jesus Christ remains the same yesterday and today and forever. God will not change so that we will not be destroyed. Over and over and over in these seasons of change, we hear this promise of God. I remain. I remain. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. How beautiful is that? That as life decays and what we hold to be beautiful in this world falls apart, the word of God will not fail. As the grass withers, the flowers fall, the word of God remains the same, stands forever. Another passage we can look at comes from another psalm. This one's Psalm 102, verses 25 to 27. In this passage, the writer of the psalm says, In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. All creation can fall apart, can fail, can deteriorate, can change can be no more. Everything might crumble, but God will not. God will remain. In Matthew 24, verse 35, we hear these words of Christ. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not my words. My words will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the words of Christ will remain. This Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he, his very words will remain. And he speaks this 
to people in the midst of upheaval, of change. The times they are changing in the words of Christ remain. Another one, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. The Lord, this everlasting God, will not grow tired or, or weary. And his understanding we cannot fathom. He's the everlasting God. These words, these promises, I'll stay the same. I'll be there. My word is true. If I promise it, I will do it. They will be fulfilled. Do I not speak and then act? My words remain, Jesus says, even after the heavens and the earth pass away. Over and over in scripture, we hear these words and these promises. And, and they're not done. Psalm 92, verse 2, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. From before creation to after creation, you are God. You remain. And one more for today, just before we're done. Uh, the last book of the Bible, all, all the way in Revelation, verse tw chapter 22, verse 13. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. God wants his people to know that in the midst of change, in the midst of transition, in the midst of uncertainty, when we know that change is coming and when we're caught by the surprise of change in our lives, if our mother and father fail us, if our, our spouse should pass away, if our family should crumble and fall, if the earth itself should melt, God remains true. God remains faithful. God remains true to God's word and his promises. God promises to remain. The times, they are a-changing. But God, our God, is remaining. Remaining. True. Good. Holy. Righteous. Remaining committed to having a relationship with you, to pursuing you with his love, remaining committed to God's love. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, continuing to extend arms of grace and mercy and forgiveness, to, to offer a place in his house, a seat at his table. Though relationships change and the world around us changes and our Nations change, and everything about the times are changing. We can hear this promise of God whispered over and over again throughout scriptures and know that there is one that remains, and that is our God. Friends, as we approach this time of change, and we don't know exactly what the future holds uh, for the United Methodist Church, we don't know what it holds for the individual churches exactly. We don't know what it holds for, for me on a personal level and in the path that is uh, before us as a family. But, but as we face that future and the ch times they are changing, may we remain in God. May we continue to grow and flourish in our relationship with Jesus. May we be filled with God's Spirit and cling and hold fast to our foundation, our rock, that which will never change. As we end here today, I'll, I'll give Mr. Zimmy Zim Zimmerman, Bob Dylan, uh, the last word again, or at least second to last word. And we'll hear that verse five once more. The line, it is drawn. The curse, it is cast. The slow one now will later be fast. It's the present now will later be past. The order is rapidly fading. The first one now will later be last. But the times, they are a-changing. Fairly certain, 
Mr. Dillon might have heard one or two of those words referenced at some point in a church. The last will be first, the first will be last, that the way things are won't always remain, that the curse of death is upon us, the times they are changing. But even through all of that, we have hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and may we trust in him as our lives change, as the seasons come and go, as the grass withers and the flowers fall, as the mountains melt and the earth trembles, as heaven and earth passes away, may we build our life on that which remains and remain because of God's faithfulness. Continue through that change because of God's goodness and God's love for you and for me, that which will never falter, never change, never leave or forsake you or me. Thanks be to God for his goodness, for his faithfulness to us through his son, Jesus Christ, and for the, the filling of his Holy Spirit, by which we have the power to continue to walk in faith. May we do that this day. For God's sake, for your good. Amen.